So I want to document my repair of this uh, little DC to DC converter here. Um, what had happened was that I was using it as a bench power supply, which to be fair is not its uh, advertised use. Oh, sorry about the lighting there. Um, I really have to turn up the exposure on the camera to get everything to a appear right and well I have a bunch of lights here and I get some glare occasionally not official studio lights just sort of standing lamps pressed into service so back to our teardown so this uh, little DC to DC converter had failed and uh, I wanted to see if I could fix it. So I don't have video of that, unfortunately. But uh, I will show you uh, what happened. And you'll notice that the... Uh, the fan is now on the outside of the case right now and there's reason for that and that is it doesn't fit on the inside anymore because of my repair now so uh, when it failed I'd been using it as a bench power supply and I connected it up to something, and there was a spark, and uh, then there was no output or lights at all from this. So, after a while, I, I opened it up and started exploring. And what I found was that the MOSFET uh, over here, in front of the inductor, uh, let's see if we can focus on that. The MOSFET right here in front of the adductor was running very hot. Now, what you see here is, is a rather a, a large TO220 case MOSFET. The original MOSFET was... Uh, lying down like this, a surface mount, an NCE6075K was in here. And I had discovered in tracing through that the MOSFET was getting hot. Now, interestingly, I used a power supply to debug this power supply. Um, of course, I took an, another bench power supply, a, a real bench power supply, and started cranking up the voltage slowly um, until I could tell where things were here and traced out the voltages and found the where I got no voltage and surprisingly where I got no voltage, the component was hot. So it was obviously... Uh, completely shorted out. So uh, I uh, desoldered it. Uh, first I recorded its number. That was important because uh, during the desoldering the uh, labeling uh, became unreadable. And uh, I looked in my uh, container here of MOSFETs from teardowns. Let's see if I can show you that. Will it focus? Yes, it will, but it's too dark to really see anything. Oh, there we go. MOSFETs from teardowns of old equipment where I had recovered parts. And uh, I didn't find anything surface mount, um, but I did find a part where the, uh, uh, the specifications exceeded what was already there. And I thought, well, 
this could probably work. And I'm not going to order the real replacement part for what was there because, well, frankly, this entire thing was under $20 and the part plus shipping would cost me more than that. So it didn't make economic sense. It was more interesting as a challenge in debugging and repairing a little converter. So I replaced it uh, with this MOSFET, which is a P, as in Peter, 40NF10. That's P40 Nancy Fox 10. And uh, gave it a try, and it, it worked. Uh, unfortunately, that also meant that uh, mechanically we had a little problem. Electrically it worked, but mechanically the fan, which used to be mounted like this, had nowhere to go anymore. So, I swapped the fan mounting to the outside. Oh, and by the way, these are little dots of double-sided sticky tape that uh, do nothing but keep these nuts from uh, spinning so that in case the screws become loose due to vibration on the fan, that uh, it reduces the chances, I hope, of the nuts falling inside the converter and shorting something out. Actually, I'm hoping it reduces the chances of the screws backing out entirely. And So I put it back together with the fan on the outside, and as I will demonstrate in the next uh, clip, it works just fine. So that's all for this part. Bye. Another note on this, in order for the MOSFET to uh, fit and on the board, I had to bend its legs in a strange way. So in it, initially the MOSFET, if you look from the side, looked like this with its three legs. So what I had to do was bend its uh, pin two back and bend pins one and three front to fit the board layout of the original MOSFET. And that seems to be working out fine. So, this is the after repair state, and as I'm going to demonstrate, it seems to work just fine. So, let's see, we have about 12 volts coming in, 11 and a half, and uh, turn it on. We have these little, my little Christmas light load attached here, and I'm going to take it out of constant current mode and hopefully you can see everything here. Turn the voltage down to mm, two or three. I was testing it at much higher voltages. Now we're out of constant current mode and we can see it lights up the lights just fine. And can it dim them? Yes, yes it can. It can dim them. And it can brighten them. Yeah, yeah it can. And if we go over to the waveform page, 
Let's see. Does it show us changing voltages? Yes, it does. Not to a great precision, but it shows them. So I would call this a success.